Good morning! Sad dog is sad because we're riding. We did get a very big walk though, mate, so. Three and a half hours yesterday. Three and a half hours. Are you feeling ready for the ride? Yes, my knee is not. 200k on the cards today. It's almost our, I think it's our second to last big ride, this is. Yeah. Um, before we get ready for 312. So we've got 200k planned. Uh, we are heading down to Windsor, which will be my first time on a Windsor bun run, which I think is, that's quite a long way to go for a bun, really, mm -hmm. isn't it? But 60k for a bun. Oh, is it only 60k for the bun? Yeah. Although 120k round trip if you just go for the bun, which I have done. Uh, and I can't eat the bun. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of gluten in it. Yeah, so I'm a celiac, so I actually won't be able to eat the bun. But I do want to go for the Windsor bun experience uh, and probably will take a photo with the bun <laughs> just to say I've done it. You can um, watch me eat it. Yeah, I'll watch you eat it. Loves a little snack. So we're all prepped and ready, true to form and running late. We're meant to leave the door, at, well, we're meant to head out the door at seven. It's now 20 past eight. Uh, the sun is cracking a flag here, which is amazing, and it's a little bit windy, so I'm going to hang on for dear life. A little bit. It's 40 miles an hour wind. Well, colour is that colour? Actually, that looks quite organised. You're right. <laughs> yeah, 40 mile an hour wind. So yeah, I think we're going to be hanging on to the bikes. I probably won't film too much chatting along with the GoPro because I think it'll probably just pick up awful sound. Um, but I'll show you the sights and the Windsor Bun Cafe. A few bits and pieces to try today, been loving these gels. These we found in uh, Tenerife in a random petrol station uh, and they were absolutely phenomenal. And I actually ordered them to come home. I'm not gonna tell you how much I paid for them. <laughs> it's a really silly move. Uh, they're made in Buckinghamshire, just down the road and I thought they were unique to Spain, so lol. Some kind of band up ahead. No idea what is going on, but I'm here for it. Decent gaff. A little bit posh. This is very dangerous in cleats. New cleats. And here is what looks like the infamous cinnamon bun cafe. <laughs> the classic bun. What is that? Courgette and avocado cake. It oh. looks like the same one. Oh my god, it does! That is the iconic cinnamon bun. How they're generous, aren't they, with the portions? Do you want to know what's over I think they're buying them from Costco. <laughs> what makes you say that? I'm not even joking. Like, that's the roof. That's a big claim. Alright, I'm in. <laughs> and we're back. So many cycles. So a funny little quirk of the calf is that you have to use the toilets downstairs. It's also in a bit of a shopping centre which feels quite unique. You've got like a pet store around you, a Moulton Brown and a few others. Uh, it's also next to a wonky house outside. It's a shambles. That is what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Quick Google tells me he's not lying. It is called the shambles and not only is it a wonky house but it's also a cafe, a bar uh, and a really really cute little restaurant and bottle shop. So. There we are, the shambles, Windsor. Check it out. I thought you were being really disrespectful. <laughs> Love it. It's absolutely manic here. I think we've just had the changing of the guards or some kind of procession. I don't know. Buzzing. Just left Windsor and I've come through some main roads and I have not been able to stop laughing. I've just seen nothing but signposts for stains, which has killed me off. From my youth watching Ali G. <laughs> and not only that, alongside the signs for stains, there's a balcony full of lads <laughs> all clearly getting on it. <laughs> oh, that looks nice, it's very posh, big house. So, yeah, it's just kind of lived up to its <laughs> stains massive. Come through the park. Nice pink buildings. We're about how many k's in? I'll tell you now. I don't know if we've broke 100 yet, have we? 114. 114, not too bad. Stop for a wee stop, as ever. <laughs> we've been very slow. We have not? We have. 24 clocks an hour average. <laughs> that is an absolute cheat, considering the man's leg hurts and he's been sitting on. Yeah, my knee is ruined. Like, it's actually, like, I need some time off the bike. Though. I said to get it's a really train. Painful. 
and you wouldn't want to go you didn't want to go on a train we'd have to go into london and then back out of london up to us we're down in sorry <laughs> <laughs> so we're quite away from home and uh, not sure how we feel about sorry what's the verdict there's nowhere to pee there's no private well there's no like cheeky roads up in the chilterns it's quite accommodating. and you can pee on many concealed lanes but here we're by a posh log place how long to the next path 20k if we get them for closes Super quick stop in Henley. Our original calf was closed, uh, which was a travesty. However, we've come to this place, which has been fab. Oh, look, look who it is. Menza. Uh, didn't even wait, we've inhaled this. I had pancakes. We had a big bowl of chips. I had a salad, just something healthy and fresh. We did chips in honey. <laughs> good. And how long have we got left? 65. 65k. One little hill. In, what do you reckon? One hour fifty. With a tailwind. Tailwind the whole way. With any luck. We've got one little hill. Um, and then yeah, the rest of it's quite flat and fast, I hope. It's now Sunday. I've come out solo this morning. We had to end yesterday's video quite abruptly and stop filming. Basically, poor eyes and his knee. He's in quite a fair bit of pain, smashing the ibuprofens. So, out of respect for the fallen knee, I stopped filming. I think I've lost my training buddy now. I think he's gonna start just resting, chilling out ready for 312 to make sure it's recovered. So I'm back out solo, solo polo, spinning around the lanes. I've got a very chilled zone one, meant to be zone one ride on the cars this morning, uh, which is almost near impossible, given 45 mile an hour winds, which I'm sure you're probably picking up on the mic. So <laughs> apologies for that sound. Yeah, I'm out and about banking some more miles, a few more long, uh, training sessions to go last week or maybe it was the week before was one of my biggest weeks on the bike I think maybe ever I'm a relatively new rider uh, in the sense that I only started riding in god I think end of 2021 just started pootling out so to do a week which was I think six nearly six 650 kilometers I think it was in one go, whilst working a full-time job, was mad, but absolutely heaven. So I think I've mentioned it before on my channel, uh, but not spoken about it too much. Over winter, I set myself a challenge. I wanted to basically do something for breast cancer uh, and raise kind of awareness of checking your boobs on the regular, male or female, uh, making sure you check for lumps, Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, and I just thought, do you know what? This is something that people need to remember to do all year round. You know, it doesn't just apply to October and you see all these amazing campaigns and then, you know, you kind of forget it's something to do and check and stay healthy and on top of all year round. Anyway, I've been wanting to, you know, raise awareness of that, do something charitable, and also, whoa, that wind really challenged myself, really challenged myself. And I decided to set myself the goal of riding 8,008.5 kilometers over winter. Uh, the reason why 8,008.5 is because if you ever put that number in on a calculator as a kid and turn it upside down, it looks like the word boobs. <laughs> so yeah, just a bit of a daft play on numbers, but also I felt like that was a really good, solid challenge of big kilometers uh, to try and bank over essentially, I guess, whoa, the wind, over the winter season. Um, and with, with challenges, I think it's always, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because 
there are some people, you know, challenging themselves in all different ways and taking on some incredible things. And it's all kind of relative to you and what you what you do. And yeah, a challenge is obviously, you know, unique to each person. And for me, I don't think I've ever ridden or I hadn't ridden, you know, more than 8,000 kilometers in an entire year. So to try and do it over the winter season, which I'm not a fair weather cyclist. I'll give myself that. I'll go out in wind, rain, you know, hail. Do draw the line at deep snow. Um, so yeah, but winter's probably when I'd claw back a little bit and just go out here and there or train quite a lot indoors, but never ever kind of keeping it consistently solid. So the, to do 8,008.5 kilometers was, it's a lot, especially when, you know, like I say, normal girl, balancing a full-time job, a few of the little side hobbies, running a busy house. It's hard to fit the mileage in, isn't it, you know? And I've met some incredible people along the way, like fun, while I've been grinding out the miles. Funnily enough, also solo riders on their own kind of charity challenges. And it's just been brilliant, like, yeah. So the aim was to complete that by 312. So the 312 ride would essentially get me over the line of the 8,008.5. So that's the plan. I'm now, I'm now three weeks to go. Um, so yeah, cramming the mileage in so that I'm on track to finish at 312. Um, and yeah, some big weeks before I start, well, I'm starting to taper soon. So this week's been another chunky week. Next week, I think will be my last big in. And then that's it then, you know. Ooh, just the three, one, two to come. Yeah, I'm buzzing for it. Yeah, just come through Little Missenden, which is absolutely heaven as a village. I didn't film, felt very sleepy and intrusive <laughs> to go past the houses, but oh my God, it's so picturesque. And just as you come out of it, I'm on this little climb. It's just a really gentle one. But I'm hugging all of this like absolutely gorgeous scenery. But yeah, I thought I should say a little bit more about the boob challenge. So the reason why I wanted to do it is because in the last few years, I've actually had a couple of experiences with finding breast lumps. And, you know, really fortunately for me, they turned out to be benign. But I went through that whole process of the fear, the worry, the scans, the getting checked out. It was such a nerve wracking process. And going through it all, just out of that situation, I just, you just, I just couldn't, I just don't ever take for granted the fact that on a few of the occasions I have found a lump, I've been so fortunate to, to not have a diagnosis that, you know, is, is life changing. So yeah, I wanted to do something which not only raised awareness, but also then, you know, raised a little bit of fund money for one of the most incredible charities, which is One More City London. Um, and it is founded and run by this most incredible woman spoken about it before on my channel, Christine. I'm hoping you'll get to meet her soon. Um, and it raises vital funds for research into secondary breast cancer. Just an absolute pig. Okay, I got caught filming then on 10%. <sighs> yeah, so that's the plan. Almost there with it. I'll pop the charity link below if you're feeling generous. No pressure at all, but yeah. That's what I've been busy doing all winter. Right, my average pace is so slow in this wind. I'm hopefully meeting Isaac and Flump for a coffee and a cake at some point. So I'm gonna get my head down and pick up the pace.